going to demonstrate two styles of crochet buttonholes and I've already worked a row edge here along the front. This is how I would do something like a cardigan button band to first work a simple row, maybe even more depending on how wide I want my band to be and then we'll start the next row and throw in our buttonholes. So I'm going to chain one to my turning chain that counts as my first stitch so I'm going to go into the second stitch and I would go till I am ready for my first buttonhole. And the first one I'm going to do is one that you would do on your very final row, and it's a crochet loop buttonhole. So I'm going to work chains until I make a loop that is the desired size. And then what I usually do is I will slip stitch into the same stitch where I placed my last single crochet, and that creates a little loop that sticks off the edge of the piece. And then I would continue single crochet along my row until it's time to do more of those. So this is what considered a decorative buttonhole it does stick out, it is visible, although depending on your button it might cover nicely. So again, I would chain to the desired length and I generally just test that and then try my button in it and then I'll do a slip stitch in the same stitch that I placed my last single crochet and that pulls it down into a loop. I think it looks a lot neater then skipping the slip stitch and just continuing to single crochet, you get a bit more of a gap. It doesn't stay quite as nice. So there are my loops. The other style that I tend to do is a crochet slit buttonhole, where I will chain some number of stitches that again I would test to try it out with my button. I'm going to do two. So I chain two. Now I'm going to skip two stitches here and go into the next one. And that creates a horizontal slit, although if this is a cardigan band, it's probably going to be vertical because I'm probably working up the front of the band right now. So I'll do that one again as well. So chain. Often it's two for a button that looks good to me, but if it's a really big button, you might need three or more. And if it's smaller, maybe just one will do it. And then again, I'm going to skip the same number of stitches that I chained. So I'm going to skip two and then continue along my row. So. With this, I don't like leaving this as a finished buttonhole. It feels a little bit less structured to me. So I generally do that on the second to last row, and then I'll work at least one more row on top of it. And when I do that, you have two choices. One is that you can work into the space of the buttonhole. So I'll do that on this one. And this again is something that you can test out because it'll affect the size and then you can try your buttons on. And then I would continue working into the regular single crochet. The other option, which I'll do on this second one, is I could work into the V of the chain, which is a little tighter, but you can get in there. And that leaves a um, strand hanging down, which you, uh, I don't like the look of it as much, frankly. It um, doesn't look quite as nice, but it does make a slightly smaller buttonhole. And a buttonhole that fits is a little bit more important to me than um, having it look perfect. So here I am, I'm just going to leave this there so we can try our buttons on because I'm running into my finished edge. So with a smaller button, this loop buttonhole is perfect. You want it to have to stretch to go on because what's going to happen when this is buttoned, there's going to be a little bit of tension probably pulling this away and you don't want it to leave a big gap because then it can undo itself. You don't want it to be able to pop through on its own. Um, this particular button is a little bit too small for my bigger buttonhole. It just pops right through without any effort needed. But my bigger button, there you go. I can get it through. It's not hard, but it does have to stretch. I can feel some resistance here. So that is a great size for this one. And then in terms of the two options, they both fit similarly. And again, I like this first one better because it gives just a little bit of a smoother edge in your opening. It's the same way that we work into lace, usually working into the space rather than the stitch. Just looks a little bit neater. But try them both. Um, try your buttons on, see what you like. I do this in advance on the edge of my swatch so I can plan out what I'm going to be doing on my actual sweater front.